I love my greenhouse. I love to be out here on a sunny winter day without even a coat. This greenhouse helps me decompress after a long day at work. It's helping me expand my business with tropical plants and plants that aren't hardy for my zone. And it is my happy place. In my quest to keep it warm for my tropical plants and my baby cuttings, I almost burned it down. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the mistakes I made so that you don't make the same ones. And I'm going to tell you what I'm doing now that is keeping my greenhouse warm and cozy this winter. My husband and I bought this Costco greenhouse late last winter, and we have been enjoying it ever since. As we enjoyed it throughout the summer and into the fall, we began thinking about how we were going to keep it warm once the temperature started to drop. Through the fall, we discussed different options. Now, while I love having a small business, if you've watched any of my other videos, then you know I have a small backyard nursery, which has been expanding every year and is really very exciting. I also have a full-time job. I'm a high school teacher, which means that I don't have thousands of dollars to spend on heating this greenhouse. So we needed to come up with a solution that was cost effective. So of course we spent too long talking about what we were going to do and the temperatures began to drop off very quickly. We decided to take an indoor heater that we had because the greenhouse isn't open to the elements, we thought it would be safe. We don't have electric run to our greenhouse, so we used an outdoor rated extension cord to plug into an outlet on the outside of our house. And we drilled a hole in the side of the greenhouse, which I'll show you in a few minutes, brought the extension cord inside, and we plugged in a Lasco tower space heater. Now, in my head at the time, I was thinking that the space heater was about five years old, but then I remembered that we bought it to heat my son's nursery, and he just turned 14. So the heater was older than I thought, but it was great because it had a built-in thermostat so I could set the temperature for whatever I wanted, and it would only go about three degrees above or three degrees below. So it kept the greenhouse nice and warm. Now, if you've seen my other videos on this Costco greenhouse, you may remember that the skylight does have a tendency to leak. In a light rain, no water really comes in, but in a moderate or heavy rain, we do get a little bit of a trickle. When we had our first rain after we installed our Lasco Tower space heater, I came out and noticed that there was a small puddle pretty far away from the heater. We tried to keep the heater away from where the skylight was because we knew that it did tend to leak a little bit. And when I saw the puddle, I thought, that's okay, no problem. No water. I'll just put a plant there to catch the water. And that worked great. So every rainstorm, I would just come out, I would put a plant where there was a little trickle coming from the greenhouse and it worked fine. Until about a month after we put the space heater into our greenhouse, we had a really heavy rain. So as I was sitting in my kitchen, watching the wind and the rain just pound the roof, I thought, hmm, I should probably go check on the heater. And when I did, oh my goodness, I opened the door, smoke billowed out. It was an overwhelming smell of burning plastic and there were sparks flying out of our space heater. So I quickly ran and unplugged the extension cord from the side of the house in order to stop it. I propped the door open to let all of the smoke out. I took the heater back into the house until we could dispose of it. And then I looked to see what caused the problem. So because the rain and the wind was so severe that day, the trickle that was coming from the skylight became a torrent. Not only was the water dripping down into my plant, it was also hitting the stones on the floor of the greenhouse and then bouncing directly into the heater. We all know water and electricity don't mix. Luckily for us, with that nasty storm came some warmer temperatures. So we had a few nights with the lows only in the 40s that gave us an opportunity to figure out how we were going to heat our greenhouse next. So I did a lot of research on Amazon. I needed something that was going to come quick, but I didn't have a lot of money to spend. And I found that there are some greenhouse heaters, heaters that are marketed specifically for greenhouses, and I was really excited. 
they were pricey, but I was willing to spend the money to keep my babies happy over the winter and be able to sell them in the spring. Now, I'm a big proponent of you get what you pay for. So while I was looking at the greenhouse heaters, which were really a little bit above my budget, I was shocked to find that they got so many poor reviews. People wrote about them burning out really quick, not lasting, and also not having any protection against water or humidity. So as I continued my research, I found this little indoor-outdoor rated heater for only about $50. And as I combed through those reviews, I found that it had many good reviews as well as a few bad reviews. The good news for me was that the bad reviews were mostly from people who were trying to use it in a space outdoors that was not enclosed, like a screened in porch or on a deck that was not enclosed. And they were unhappy with the power of the heater, feeling that it didn't warm their space enough. For me, in this enclosed greenhouse, this heater works great. For less than $55, I'm able to keep my greenhouse 20 to 25 degrees warmer than it is outside at night. During the day, I really don't need the heater. If it's sunny and beautiful right now, it is right now. It's 74 degrees in this greenhouse, and that is all sun energy. Unfortunately, once the sun goes down, this greenhouse would only be one to three degrees warmer than the outside temperature. So having this little heater in this enclosed greenhouse has allowed me to keep it 20 to 25 degrees warmer than the outside temperature, which has been perfect for my gardenias and my more sensitive plants that I'm growing out. It's also been really great for the cuttings that I have that are growing out in here that hopefully will be big and beautiful and ready to plant in my yard or put up for sale this spring. The other thing that I liked about this particular heater is its small size is able to fit under the shelf that runs along the greenhouse. And I feel that the shelf does offer one small extra layer of protection just in case some moisture does get into the greenhouse. You can set it to turn off after it gets to a certain point. So we have it set so that when it gets too warm in here, the heater will shut off. It's not constantly running. It did not come with a thermostat. I wish now, looking back, that I had purchased one that has a thermostat. So I'll leave links for the one that I bought and a similar one that comes with a thermostat that you may like better. I also saw that on Amazon, there are some thermostats that say they hook up to any heater. So I'm thinking about getting one of those just to make things a little bit more consistent, especially on those really cold nights. Now, while I think this heater is really effective and it has kept my greenhouse 20 to 25 degrees warmer than the outside temperature at night, I do think it would struggle if I lived in an area where it went consistently negative at night. So far, our coldest temperature has been 22 degrees and it was in the low 40s in this greenhouse at the same time. Usually our chilly nights get to be around 27 or 28 and it's been remaining in the 40s in here, which has been great for my plants and has worked really well even for my cuttings. Some other things that we did to keep the greenhouse warm was to take the beeswax skylight opener off of the skylight for the winter. We'll put that back on in the spring. We didn't want the skylight opening, possibly letting in rain or letting out our warm air if it got just a little bit warm. Another thing that we did to keep this greenhouse nice and cozy warm was to install fiberboard insulation over the vent that's in the back of the greenhouse. We just traced a square and cut it to fit and slipped it right in. We'll take that back out once the temperatures warm up. One other thing I almost forgot to mention is that while the heater is keeping our greenhouse 20 to 25 degrees warmer than the outside temperature at night, I don't have it on full blast. I only have it set for a little bit above halfway. So I'm pretty confident that even if we had nights that were getting down into the lower teens and maybe even some higher single digits. I think I could keep this greenhouse above 32 degrees if I turned it all the way up. But my other suggestion for you would be to have a plan. What are you going to do if your heater fails or if you just get nights that are way colder than you expected? I have a pretty expansive kitchen countertop. So if we get to a point where we're going to go negative, all of these plants will be taking a vacation on my kitchen counter until the weather warms up. 
If you have a greenhouse, I would love to hear what you're using to heat yours, especially if it's something that's more energy efficient than what I have. We also have considered getting some solar panels. They sell a really nice setup at Harbor Freight. We were looking at that um, and being able to run our heater that way and possibly some lights so that I could work out here even once it gets dark. That's one thing that kills me. I have this great greenhouse, but it gets dark so early and there's no lights out here. And it's really kind of hard to work by flashlight. So I'm thinking maybe some fairy lights, maybe some kind of overhead lights so that I could be out here even if Another thing that's been really great for me having this greenhouse is for propagation. Here you can see a tray of hardwood cuttings that I did. It's mixed. I have some hydrangeas, I have some forsythia, and I even have some roses in here. And I took these cuttings just about four weeks ago. You can see that in the warmth, they're already waking up and I'll be potting these up and maybe even selling some this spring. Thank you so much for watching today. I know I say that at the end of every video, but I really mean it. When I started this channel a year ago, I never imagined that I would get more than a thousand subscribers. And here I'm at 4,717. That blows me away. My children told me that I was supposed to do a 1,000 subscriber special. I guess because I'm old, <laughs> I didn't know that that was a thing, but I promise them and I'll promise you that when I get to 5,000 subscribers, I'm going to embarrass myself by putting out a blooper reel. You may not realize this, but I am a total klutz and I've got some really funny footage <laughs> from the last year. So if you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do so. so I could put out some embarrassing footage of myself and make everybody smile. Thanks again. Have a great day.